Greetings, everyone. So I, I have to give you a little bit of a backstory. On Tuesday, my husband Joe and I were with a friend. He's Iranian. His name's Shaharam. And we were uh, celebrating um, pre-festivals for Nauruz, which is the new year in Iran, Persia. And um, Rahima and Gemma and Yasmin and I were doing some texting that day as a group. So I started sending these photos of the event and it came to, would you present about it? So I put together a few little slides because I think it's interesting to see some things and also to talk about this very special ho holiday, its origin, and uh, some of the experience that we had on Tuesday. So I'm going to share my screen right now. And hopefully we'll get this PowerPoint up and running. And I'll talk, you, talk us through this. So the holiday is Nauruz. And the greeting for Nauruz would be Nauruz Ma Baruch. So meaning Happy New Year. Or Nauruz Peruz, meaning Victorious New Year. The Iranian New Year Festival, it also begins, the actual date will be this, uh, on, the, on the solstice, not the solstice, the equinox, uh, but it begins four weeks before that. And every Tuesday, it is celebrated honoring one of the elements. So earth, water, fire, air, or it's referred to as wind. Um, of course, fire is a big part of these Tuesdays in the service. And we know that in the Zoroastrian tradition that fire represents God's wisdom, illumination. The year, this year's new year, will be 1401, which is the equivalent to our 2022. The years are based on the Islamic calendar, and of course the specific day and time is based on the lunar or the astronomical calendar. So we walked into this restaurant. Our friend took us to an Iranian restaurant to celebrate this fourth of the Tuesdays leading up to Nauru's. And there's this table, it's an altar of sorts. And we sit down and then I notice all these people are standing in front of it and taking pictures. So I said, what's happening? Why are they doing this? And he said, well, let's walk up and I'll explain it to you. And he did, and I want to also explain it to you, but I'm going to leave this image up just to look at it and look at all the color and beauty there while I talk about the seven, seven things that everyone does celebrating or leading up to Nauru's. And one of them is they build an off altar like this in their home. And this is called a haft, H-A-F-T, next word, seen, S-E-E-N, altar, a haft, seen, altar. And again, I'll share more about this because I found it really fascinating and interesting. The second thing, the house is cleaned everywhere, including one's own belongings. In fact, they say that the Iranians do this so much so that they call it shaking the house. So they really give a lot of attention to um, cleaning the home and you know making a fresh start. The next thing that is done, this is the third thing, is everyone wears new clothing, even down to the undergarments. So they go buy new clothing. And of course, this is a represent, uh, to represent freshness and cleanness and a new beginning. The other thing, number four, is everyone calls everyone else to wish them a happy new year. We often do this in our own tradition or our own traditions. Um, the fifth thing is people, I, there's a word, their words are Deed Abaz, meaning to see and see again. And what this means, and this I recognized in India with the Tibetans, because they do this on their new year, is that um, according to the tradition for 13 days, uh, beginning on the new year, through this 13 day period, which I, if I have time, I'll mention in the, at the end, um, you go and you visit all your relatives and your friends, starting with the elders of your own family and working your way through. Now, once you pay them a visit, they have to come and pay you a visit in your home. And of course, they'll be greeted with this half seen altar and also pastries and, and chai are served 
during these visits. The sixth thing, and very importantly, is that um, one sense sets one's intention for this uh, coming of the new year. And then again, the haft scene altar is built in all meeting places and also homes. Now, here's Joe and myself with our friend Shaharam. He's got a beautiful smile and beautiful heart. And we're standing in front of the altar. And I want to talk about what's the meaning of these things. And I'm going to show you one more picture so maybe you can see them in detail. I'm not going to attempt to say the words in Persian, but you see here the sprouting grass in the center. And this symbolizes rebirth and growth. And then you see something that's um, made with something called samanu. And it's made with, this is germinated wheat and water. And so that you can see here in sort of the center field. And um, that is to represent power and strength. The next thing is, um, uh, and I'm looking for them here. I'm not sure I'm seeing them. It may be a different variety of flower, but often um, oleaster or Russian berries are um, on the altar and they symbolize love. Maybe here the tulips are doing that. Um, sumac is used to represent um, the sunrise. Vinegar is used to symbolize patience. The apple is to symbolize beauty. And the garlic is to symbolize health and medicine. And so again, you see all those things here in some form. There are other items that are often placed there as well. And it's interesting to know that those items that I just mentioned all begin with the letter S in our language, seen in Persian language. So the haft seen altar represents these different objects, but there's significance in the beginning with the S as the letter, um, the day of the week, Tuesday, begins with the letter S. So these four Tuesdays are also significant. There are also items added here, and you see this on the altar. The egg obviously symbolizing eternity. Excuse me. Well, it could be eternity, but here it's specifically fertility. The mirror uh, is a symbol of self-reflection. And so I noticed when people were, a lot of people at the restaurant were taking selfies, so they were being reflected in the mirror and could see their own image. So I know that that's significant um, in the custom. A candle also representing enlightenment. We see several of those on this altar. And the goldfish is a symbol of progress. And then there's a book, a book of wisdom. And these can be um, the Quran or a book of Hafiz or Ferdowsi. There is many different things, but there's always a, a special book there. There we see it on the right field with a candle on the top of it. So how did the um, how did this get started? How did our um, this tradition get started? Let me go to the next slide. Well, the celebration of Nehru's is um, recounted and told in the Old Testament in the Book of Kings and in the Zoroastrian Vesta. And it dates back, that dates back to the first century. The story's about King Jamshed, and that's who you see here. And it's told as part of the origin story of Nehru's, and it goes like this. King Jamshed is introduced and recognized as the kindest and most knowledgeable ruler in Persia, the region that stretched from modern Turkey to Pakistan such a large empire it was. The story tells that King Jamshed was very sensitive, not only to his subjects, but also to the rhythms of the earth. The king noticed that many of his subjects had started to quarrel with one another, and injustices were being rendered all over the kingdom, and this was during the cold and the dark period of the earth, the winter months. When spring came and the earth began to blossom, the king wanted to mark this time as the start of the new year, a time of new beginnings for people and the earth. And so the spring festivals held every Tuesday for the four weeks leading up to the actual uh, spring equinox. And each Tuesday, people come together to celebrate the day of one of the four elements, as I had mentioned before. 
So the first Tuesday is the Water Tuesday, and this is to symbolize purity and renewal, the melting of the snow and that renews nature. The second Tuesday is Fire Tuesday, and the fire is symbolic of rebirth, or sort of burning up the old. The Yes, the third Thursday is Earth Third, excuse me, Tuesday is Earth Tuesday, and it marks the revival of the Earth. And then finally, wind is the fourth Thursday, and wind opens the buds so that um, beautiful blossoms can come forth, and it, of course, marks the arrival of spring. We're getting plenty of those down here. I don't know about you, but we have been having lots of spring wind. So this, there's a fire, fire worship is an integral part of the celebrations, and the fires are being lit on all four of the Tuesdays leading up to Nowruz. On the last Win Tuesday, the festival evolves to jumping over a series of fires as a purification. And the tradition was brought by the Zoroastrians, and they celebrate fire again as everlasting strength and health. So the symbolism of jumping over the fire, here we see Joe about ready. They went out and people said, how did they do that? It's like, well, the, everyone, everything was closed around them and they went out in the back parking lot and built these four fires. So there's these four fires that one jumps over. We're going to look at this little video and as we do, think to yourself that you're jumping over this fire with Joe and the the symbolic um, meaning of it is that we're cleansing ourselves of any ill, whether it's physical, emotional, or societal, and we certainly know we need that worldwide, and that that's all from the past year, and that we're preparing a way for rebirth, uh, and that Nauru's brings us. It's also a time of forgiveness, it said, and they said sometimes when there's quarreling or um, sort of disharmony in the family, and I, we, I saw this, I saw some groups doing this together that evening. They hold hands and jump over the fire together to help bring about peace and healing of any rifts. So here we go. We're going to watch Joe go run and leap over these fires. And remember that you yourself, we're all being cleansed. The world's being cleansed and purified and made strong and healthy, leaving the old behind and leaping towards the new. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. I wonder if we could do it one more time because we certainly could use it. <laughs> go, Joe, go. Okay, so did we get enough? Do we need to see it one more time? One more time, I say. Go, Joe, go. <laughs> Well, the dancing's coming later and very soon. So the next thing is that we have this bountiful feast and sumptuous food of all different flavors. And, you know, it, it's wonderful. And then what happens after that is dancing. So <laughs> everyone jumps up and arms are in the air, twirling and whirling and laughing and clapping. And we just, we all dance together and dance the night away. And that's Nauru's Ma Baru. I want to say one prayer that is said to, it's a beautiful one. O oh, you, transformer of hearts and spiritual states, make our states the loveliest of states. I'll say it one more time. O oh, you, transformer of hearts and spiritual states, make our states the loveliest of states. May it be so. Thank you so much.
So in the spirit of the Zoroastrian New Year, we will sing a Zoroastrian prayer, divinely inspired through our beloved Murshid Kabir kits, which I know many of you are familiar with. So we, we invoke, let me get a little bit more comfortable here. Get a little sound going. We invoke our mighty, the goddess of the earth, boundless positive energy and calm power who faces the outer negative forces that come to disturb our inner balance and might. Anahita, the goddess of the heavenly waters, mighty and immaculate, who gives vitality to all life and makes our worship powerful and pure. Atar, God of the holy fire, light of divine revelation, whose fiery tests guide us toward physical and spiritual strength, wisdom, truth, and love. Vayu, God of the wind, atmosphere and space, whose might and benevolence chases away all evil and guides us towards the good way. Ahura Mazda, creator of all, supreme God, Lord of Wisdom, the one who is ennobling, the fountain of goodness, who encourages us to be our best self. Bye. 
by you are mighty anahita ator by you ahura mazda ahura mazda ahura mazda Ahura Mazda